Regression Analysis 3, Interpreting Regression Estimates. So where you're going with this is a table that looks something like this. This will be, a, you will have a table too also that will be a table of the effect of perhaps income and something else. So income is my x1 variable and health expenditure effort is my x2 variable on life expectancy. That's my y variable. Okay, so the you have a descriptive title for your table Notice that it's centered, and then in parentheses underneath it says standard errors in parentheses. And in this lecture I'm going to talk about, oh, well, we just talked about that before, that the regression gives you the standard error and the coefficients. Okay, so um, you can see that there are two columns um, of results, and then there's the x1 variable and the x2 variable. Notice that they're all written out. I don't have to interpret anything. It's all there. A table needs to stand alone. So without looking at the text, I should be able to look at the table and understand exactly what I'm looking at. So here are the uh, coefficients. Standard errors are in parentheses. And then there's some other stuff um, that I'll talk about um, in a moment. But there's also the table includes the number of countries. The source, uh, world development indicators, authors calculations, and do this. Because uh, they did all the work of collecting the data, but you're the one who put it together put the analysis together and then notes that that the, you should have what the dependent variable is um, its life expectancy at birth what year the data are from and how the models were estimated they were estimated with ordinary least squares regressions in Excel okay um, and then the significant stuff I'll talk about in a minute all right so here's the table again but just with the numbers uh, so I've highlighted in red the coefficients and um, so what's going on with the decimal places? It says that um, you should report coefficients to three decimal places or to however many you need to get a significant non-zero digit. So down here it's telling us that. But here I've got more than three decimals. And that's because it took a long ways out to get to a significant digit, a non-zero uh, number. In this one, I had to go out even farther. And so what you want to do is you want to, you don't want to just have, like this one would be 0, 0, 0. That doesn't give any information. You want to go out until you've got a number other than 0. But the other ones all have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 decimals. So that's, uh, that's what you're looking at here. Okay. So when you interpret the regression coefficients, there are three things that you need to look at. And those are the three S's. Sign. Is the effect of x on y positive or negative? Size. Is the effect large enough to matter? Is it economically significant? And significance. Is the effect statistically significant? Can we say for sure that x and y are related? So let's start with the sign. That's the easiest one. Here's the coefficient on GDP per capita from the second column of my table 2. It's 0.0004. So is it positive or negative? You're right, it's positive. So that means that higher GDP per capita is associated with, that's right, longer life expectancy. Um, and that's on average for the included countries. Okay, so the sign is the first thing that you look at is the thing positive or negatively associated with the Y variable. The next thing is uh, statistical significance. Uh, I'll go to size in a minute. The, the size is more involved. So let's talk about statistical significance. Statistical significance means that if we selected another set of countries or the same set of countries in a different time, we'd get the same coefficient, that the relationship would still be there. So when we have statistical significance, we know that the relationship is real and, and generalizable, basically. Um, so I'm going down to the last point here. If statistical significance is low, then you can't be sure that x really affects y. With low significance, the effect might really be zero. For low significance, you don't want to be too excited about your coefficient. So maybe you're like, yeah, I knew it was going to be positive. Um, but if it's very low significance, it's, it's not positive or negative. It's just zero. There's no relationship. So you want to have a, a high enough level of statistical significance so you're sure that your relationship is true. So what's considered statistically significant? You decide ahead of time and the standard significance level is 5%.
which means you have only a 5% chance that the coefficient is really zero. Um, so at a 5% five, six, five significance level, you are 95% sure that there really is a relationship between x and y. That is pretty doggone sure. Many researchers also mention coefficients that are significant at the 10% level. And that would mean that you're 90% sure that it's real. And that's pretty sure also. So for your class project, use both 5 and 10% levels to assess statistical significance. OK. So asterisk, uh, typically we mark the coefficient estimates that are statistically significant. And all of mine were significant at the 5% level. So I didn't have to worry about the 10% level. But if you have something significant at the 10% level, we usually use a dagger sign. Um, and if you're at that situation, just ask um, the instructors and we'll help you with that. Results that are not statistically significant, unless they are very large, unless the coefficients have a very large size, you don't really discuss them except to say there's no relationship. So you wouldn't say, oh, it has a positive relationship or a negative relationship. You just say, it doesn't seem to have a relationship. We don't want you to throw out the variables, though. Because uh, when you developed your model, you justified why they needed to be considered. And so when you're testing your model, the non-relationship is a finding that that part of your model wasn't actually uh, affecting, that that x variable was not affecting the y variable. OK, let's go to size. This is the most important of the three S's because it tells us if the relationship actually matters. A statistically significant coefficient may not have economic significance if its effect is really, really small. So how do you figure out if it's big or little? Well, you need to see what the coefficient is uh, and also in terms of the range of variation in your data. So if your data has very little, signif uh, very little variation, like everything, let's say, is in within a one point, one unit of each other, and your coefficient is teeny, teeny, tiny, then for like the whole range of your data, which maybe is one, um, it's going to be teeny, teeny, tiny. So 0 0.004, is that economic signific economically significant? And what's the size of that? It looks pretty small. But let's remember what it tells us. What's the range of, that's on GDP per capita. Um, and it's a lot bigger than one unit, the range across all countries. Okay. So remember that the coefficient is telling us the change in y for a one unit change in x. So if you live point so you live 0. 0.004 years longer if your country's per capita GDP increases by one unit. So that seems small. But one unit of PPP per capita GDP is just a dollar in the United States. It's what a dollar can buy. That's not much. So you wouldn't expect a dollar over a whole year to make a big difference. A thousand dollars a year might. And so what you would do is you're like, well, is there $1,000? Do, do my data vary by $1,000? And the answer is, yeah, they vary by a lot, right, GDP per capita. And so you can take another number that is reasonable within your data, that your data span, and say, OK, so that would mean that for $1,000 in per capita GDP increase, it means I get 0.4 years, which is 4.8 months. So that starts to be economically significant. That would matter to people. OK, the other way to do it is to look at the standard deviation, rather than just say a number. Oh, well, what if it's 1,000 more? If the standard deviation uh, is large, then your coefficient might be large, too, in that it will have a big effect on countries that are at one end or the other of the standard deviation. Here's my table one for my project. Here's the standard deviation for GDP per capita. It's really big. It's $13,384. So if I want to ask uh, if 0.004 is, is what the size of that is, is it economically significant? Well, let's do the math. I get 0.0004 years for every $1. So for $13,384, I get that amount times 0 0.004, I get 5.4 years. So you might not care if you get to live a week or two longer, but I would argue that five or more years is economically significant. It matters to people. So how do you tell if your coefficient is economically significant? 
So the first thing to ask is, does a one unit change in x have a meaningful impact on y? And if the answer is yes, well then it is economically significant. If the answer is no, as we saw in the GDP example, 0. 0.0004, go to the next step. Does a one or two standard deviation change in x have a meaningful impact on y? If that number, if the coefficient times the standard deviation or times two times the standard deviation is economically significant, or is, is meaningful, then it is economically significant. And if you're looking at the whole variation or the two standard deviations in your data and it's still teeny tiny, then it's not economically significant. And what do we mean by meaningful? So there are a couple of things you can think about there. Is the effect a, size, a sizable proportion of the standard deviation of the y variable? If the mean of the y variable is 4.2 and the standard deviation is 0.5, then a coefficient of 0.25 would be pretty big, right? Because that's half of the standard deviation. And remember that each standard, or, or uh, if you're one standard deviation away from the mean, that's like um, something like 38% of your, in a normal distribution, that's like 38% of your sample. And so that's large, having something that's half of a standard deviation. Another thing to think about is, would a person experiencing the coefficient effect care? Would someone care about being one standard deviation above the mean in income and getting to live five years more? Ultimately, it's your interpretation, and it's valid so long as you make a good argument for it in terms of meaningful. But you don't want to discount small numbers um, because they might matter to people, like five years, or they might be a sizable proportion, a big change in terms of the y variable. All right, so this is how you could write it up. After controlling for health spending effort, every dollar increase in per capita GDP raises a country's life expectancy by 0. 0.0004 years. People living in a country with income at one standard deviation above the mean can expect to live 0. 0.0004 times 13,384. That's 5.4 more years than people in a country at the mean income level. This result is significant at standard confidence levels which means it is likely to hold over time and among countries not included in the sample. Okay, so that part, the first part, was the sign. I said every dollar increase in per capita GDP raises a country's life expectancy. What about the size? I interpreted the size to say, okay, look, if you're one standard deviation above the mean, you get 5.4 more years. And then I mentioned that it is statistically significant. So when you interpret your results, you want to discuss the three S's, the sign, the size, and the significance. Okay, next lecture is going to be more on statistical significance.